A man would murder his foster brother's wife, seven children, and a niece, but nobody seemed to know why. But before we get started, welcome to True Crime with Maneater. If you love all things true crime, including missing person cases, cold cases, and just the strange happenings of the world, you've come to the right place. Be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss video upload. Let's get started. Lauren J. Aquin was born on March 21st, 1950. I wasn't able to find out much about his early life, but he did end up in foster care where he met and remained close with his foster brother, Frederick Bodon. Lauren and Frederick grew up in a house not far from where Lauren would go on a rampage and murder nine people. His foster brother, Frederick, would eventually marry a woman named Cheryl, and they had seven children together. It seems that Lauren was very close to the family he had even lived with them for a period of time. He would eventually move out a few years later and then visit their home quite often in Prospect, Connecticut. But nobody could imagine what Lauren was going to do to the family. On Friday, July 22, 1977, Lauren went to the home of his foster brother, Fred, who was at work at the time, and would kill his wife, Cheryl, their seven children, and a niece by bludgeoning them to death with a tire iron. Lauren was also accused of molesting one of the children, 10-year-old Sharon, before killing her. But there's much debate about that. I've read that it was proven he didn't. I've read that it's proven he did. Because the case is so old, I'm really not sure. After murdering the family, he would go to the basement, grab gasoline, and light the house on fire. Fortunately, neighbors got up and they smelled smoke and called for police. And when police and firefighters arrived, they were met with a deadly scene. The body of Cheryl was found on the kitchen floor, while the bodies of three children were found in one bedroom and two more children in another. One child was found dead in the master bedroom and two more bodies were found in the bathroom. Several of the children, as well as Cheryl, had their hands tied behind their backs. Two of the other children's feet were tied together and all of the children appeared to have head wounds. Within a 24-hour period, police had talked to about 100 different witnesses, including Fred, whose home it was, but he was at work at the time, and his foster brother, Lorne. On that Sunday night, Lorne decided to make a statement to the police, and he would admit to attacking his sister-in-law, her seven children, and the niece that had been staying the night there. He would later be charged with nine counts of murder and one count of arson. The Supreme Court of Connecticut described the murders as brutal and apparently motiveless, but prosecutors stated that Lorne did have a motive. They believe he went there that night because he had been molesting one of the children, and either Cheryl found out or the child threatened to tell her mother, and so he decided to murder the whole family before any of that could happen. Eventually, Lauren would give a confession, and it was pretty graphic. He would say that he went to the house that night, and he first attacked Cheryl. He said that she went to get him a beer out of the refrigerator, he took a lug wrench, and he hit her repeatedly, and then he would go and murder the children in the same way. After he said he returned to the kitchen and he noticed that Cheryl was still moaning and alive, so he would stab her and begin to hit her again. I guess there was some confusion because during the confession, he doesn't mention at least three of the children by name, but in one of the passages he states, I opened a bedroom door, went in, and started swinging the lug wrench. I don't know who the kids were, but they were standing in two cribs. But other children in his statement were mentioned by name, which also described how he got a five gallon gas can from the basement and set the house on fire. Although we don't know much about Lauren's upbringing, we do know a bit about his foster family. The neighbors of his foster family which described Lauren as a man who had been troubled for many years. But his foster mother, Marianne, would go on to say that maybe it was a fire 14 years ago that started his crime spree. She said there was a fire in her home that had destroyed everything and that Lauren probably wanted to have things like toys and clothing, things that the family couldn't replace right away. She said that's the time he just dropped out. She did mention that she took him into her home at the age of nine, but after that fire, he quit school and he started stealing from the neighbors. But she did say that there was nothing criminal about him and nothing violent, and she said he had no reason to do it. A reporter would ask if she believed that her foster son had killed her grandchildren and she said, it's on the radio. They just don't publish things like that unless it's true. She would say, we can't believe it. He loved those kids. Lauren's foster sister, Pauline, 
would go on to say, Warren was a completely different person when he was around his foster family. When everybody wasn't around, he was inside himself like a shell. He liked to think by himself. He liked to be alone. I just can't believe he did it. And you should have seen him with those kids. He'd sit and play with them for hours. Although the foster family was in disbelief that Lauren would do this, those around him seemed to say that he had a very quick temper. He was quick to join a fight, and he was once arrested for shooting at Waterbury Tavern. I think that says a lot about his personality, that he'd pull out a gun and start shooting at a tavern. I mean, that seems incredibly violent and, quite frankly, just sporadic. I mean, you must have had an issue with somebody in there, but to pull out your gun and just start aiming and shooting... I mean, you could have killed innocent people. So I think that says a lot about who he was. Family and friends and neighbors would say that they don't recall him holding a job for long periods of time. He had worked as a gas station attendant, and on occasion, he helped side houses. This crime bothers me for so many reasons. First, there's a lot of speculation that he hadn't worked alone. Many people believe that he couldn't have subdued all of those people and tied them down and murdered them in a very vicious way. I mean, not to be graphic, but if you're going to beat somebody to death, that's going to take a lot of time and energy. His victims would include Cheryl, who was 29, Deborah Ann, who was 9, Sharon Lee, who was 10, Frederick Allen, who was 11, Roderick, who was 6, Paul Albert, who was 8, Holly Lynn, who was 5, Mary Lou, who was four, and the ninth victim was Cheryl's niece, Jennifer, and she was six. She had only been staying with the family for that night. So as I stated, many people believe that he couldn't have been working alone. That's nine people that he had to contain into the home. But if we look at the children's ages, I really don't think he really needed somebody to help him commit this crime. They were all very young and probably terrified. I don't think it was necessarily hard to tie them up because they would have listened to him. First of all, they know him as their uncle. It's somebody they can trust or they believe they can trust because they're children. So on top of fear and knowing this person, I really don't believe that he had help. I'm really unsure of motive. It does seem that there's some debate of whether he was molesting one of the children or not. If he was, that does seem like a very possible motive. He didn't want to go to jail. Maybe he worried about what his foster brother would do or say or how he would be treated with his foster family. It was well known that he spent a lot of time with the family, and obviously he was alone with the children, quite frankly. He could have been doing that. But it doesn't seem that he ever confessed to why he did it. He didn't tell them anything other than he did it and how he did it. I think it sticks out most to me that he murdered nine people, and eight of those people were children. As you guys know, crimes against children really get to me. I just can never imagine how anybody could hurt a child, let alone eight of them, that did nothing wrong. So I'm not sure about his motive. Was it jealousy? Was it anger? Had he done something terrible to Sharon? All very possible. I also thought that it was interesting that other than the confession, I couldn't seem to find any other information about evidence. They didn't mention that his blood was there or fingerprints because this is 1977. I don't know if they didn't have enough evidence because the house was on fire and the bodies were burnt. So either they didn't release what evidence they had because I'm not able to find it, or perhaps they didn't have enough evidence and they went solely on a confession. And because it was 1977, that's absolutely a possibility. So I would love to know your thoughts on this case. Did Lauren act alone? What were his motives? But that's it for today, guys. If you like this video or any other video on my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss video upload. In the meantime, check out some other videos on my channel while you wait for the next upload, and I'll see you then.